Hi guys, thought you might want to see this. Uh, this is a follow-up uh, to the video I made recently demonstrating some of the uh, retro computer calls uh, running on uh, Mister uh, or DE10 uh, Nano FPGA. So this uh, is Ubuntu uh, 21.04 currently running on a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 meg version, uh, installed in the Despi case. You can see here just the right, and you can also see the uh, the Mister uh, FPGA to the left, but uh, we're not going to focus on that at the moment. Okay. So, this is a 64-bit version of uh, Ubuntu that's installed, and it's currently running in 720p resolution. So it's worth mentioning that the uh, the video playback is uh, is pretty reasonable. So streaming from uh, from YouTube is is not bad. The 720p is pretty stable. Uh, you still occasionally get a few drop frames, but not enough to uh, to cause a problem. Uh, but we're not really going to look at that at the moment. What we're going to look at is some of the uh, the emulators uh, as a bit of a comparison to uh, to the FPGA. So. Just so that we can give a little bit of a, a better demo, I'll plug the joystick in. Okay, so I'm only going to focus on the uh, the wedge machines from the late 80s, early 90s. So we'll have a quick look at the Amiga, the uh, Acorn Archimedes, and the Atari ST. So the uh, the Amiga is using an emulator uh, called Amiberry. I'll show you the version in a second. Let's just spin that up. So this is being configured to come up full screen. Okay, and you can see it's running in quite a high resolution at the moment. So let's go through a few of the settings here. So if we have a look in preferences, we can see that the screen mode is currently set to 800 by 600 whereas the default um, high-res screen mode for an Amiga is, when I can find it. Okay, there you go, you can see PAL high-res, if I just click on that for a second, 640 by 256. If we press F12, we can see that this is version 414, 4.1.4 of Amiberry. We're currently running as a 68030 with a 6882 um, FPU. We've got JIT enabled for the CPU. The CPU speed is set to fastest. We can see we've got the chipset set up to use AGA and it's using the, uh, the A4000 variant. We've got a 3.1 kickstart ROM, two megs of chip RAM, 128 megs of fast RAM. We're using the uh, UAE Zorro 3 RTG with 128 megs. The screen resolution is currently set to 1280 by 720, so 720p in other words. So if we resume that, and we'll have a quick look at sysinfo for what it's worth. So this is sysinfo version 4. Let me do a quick speed test on this. Notwithstanding, um, sysinfo is perhaps not the most accurate tool in the world, but it does give us an indication. So for uh, comparative purposes, it's quite useful. So 47 times the speed of an A4000 with a 68040 at 25 megahertz. Pretty respectable. And if we run it a few times, You'll probably see a little bit of variation. Drops down to 41, right again, 41. Give it the best of five, shall we? 41, it's fairly consistent. All right, 41, okay. So we'll we'll run with 41 on that basis. Um, and just for, for comparison, the Mr. FPGA with the Minimig Core configured as a 68020 will give about 0.71, possibly 0.72, based on the uh, the same architecture. So it's a considerable difference, but for the purposes of, it doesn't actually make a lot of difference in terms of usability. So you can see the um, the response is, is absolutely 
phenomenal really. If we have a quick look at uh, a few features here, so if we'll we'll just go in and fire up Dopus. There you go, pretty much instant. Okay, no qualms with that. If we have a quick look at web browsing. Now this is where there is a benefit here because this is using the um, IP stack as part of the emulator and that's effectively using pretty much the uh, the native speed of the network interface on the Pi. In this case, um, it's going to be one gigabit Ethernet, obviously not by the time it gets to, uh, to the router, but uh, even so, that's very responsive. If we were to compare that with the Mr. FPGA Minimid Core, where you're limited to um, the PPP listener on the underlying Linux architecture, we're only achieving 115, 200 strictly speaking, but um, but the performance is probably more in the region of 19.2, uh, possibly a little better. Not going to debate it too much, but the point is there is a considerable difference. This is actually quite usable. Uh, you can see the uh, the inline images load up almost instantly as you'd expect. Obviously, it's still got the limitations of not being a modern browser, so uh, certificates and um, and flash and things of that ilk, uh, not an option. But um, if you just want to jump onto Aminet or Google, it's absolutely fine. Okay, so we'll come out of that. Okay, and if we fire up iGame. So iGame, um, will run on any architecture from a 68020 and above. Um, and it basically uses MUI under the hood, but we'll not get into that too much. What we're really interested in is to see how this runs um, a few games for comparison. So let's take something that's reasonably demanding, like Xenon 2. I'll skip the intro. Now I have actually demonstrated this in a previous video on the uh, the Pi 400. Pi 400, Pi 4, very little difference. Apart from the footprint. Uh, it's worth mentioning actually that this machine has been uh, overclocked. It's currently running at 2.2 gigahertz. Um, and the, uh, the GPU is being slightly overclocked as well. So I'm not going to play any more of that. That should be enough to demonstrate the point. Now, what I can tell you, which you won't obviously be able to appreciate without holding the uh, the joystick yourself, is that there is a very small amount of lag. It's almost negligible. Um, you probably wouldn't even be able to appreciate it unless you'd compared it side by side with the FPGA, where there is almost zero lag by comparison. Uh, does it affect the gameplay? Mm, slightly but not enough to cause a problem. It's still an enjoyable experience, but it's worth bearing in mind. So if you're a purist, this might not be the best option for you. If you're a, if you're a casual gamer that wants to go back and play some old Amiga games, then I would say this is absolutely fine. And of course, it's a, it's a cheap option. It's the cost of the pie plus whatever case you want to pop it into in a bit of your, your time. That's pretty much it. So. Let's have a look at one more. Um, we'll go for Zool, not Zool 2. Let's kill that. Okay, now that that scene there, that cut scene or whatever you want to call it, actually does have some audio on it, strictly speaking. But uh, sometimes it works on here, sometimes it doesn't. On the FPGA, interestingly enough, it never works. Um, but other people may have different experience. So there you go. You now the gameplay on this, it's not quite as critical as on uh, an arcade game like Xenon 2, but it's very respectable, perfectly playable. Okay, we won't play anymore. 
you get the idea. So that's absolutely fine. And we'll have to just reset that. Okay, so that'll do for the Amiga. We'll come out of there. This time we'll try the Archimedes. Okay, so this is Arculator version two. I'll just show you how this is set up. So we've got the machine set up as an A3020 with an ARM250 CPU, no FPU, four megs of RAM, and overclocked to 60 megahertz, uh, running RISCOS 3.10. And we've got, um, the games pad installed and we're using the uh, competition pro joystick there okay we've also got the Arculator support modules but um, in addition to that we've got a couple of hard drives defined and that's pretty much it so if we start this up now this will always start up by default in a window but we can change the video to full screen. Okay. Now, because we've got the games pad um, support enabled, we'll be able to use the uh, Games Pro Okay, so let's go for a comparison. So we've had a look at Xenon 2 already on the Amiga. Let's have a look at it on here. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so this is pretty much pushing this um, particular emulator about as far as I can. Um, the machine has to be running in 70, 720p and it has to be overclocked, otherwise it just won't run full screen. It'll run on a window quite happily, but not full screen. But you can hear that the, uh, hopefully hear the, the sound reproduction, the audio reproduction is absolutely spot on. Exactly what I'd expect from a hardware machine um, and, I, and I have one so I, I know what to listen for and I'd say that was pretty accurate. Okay, gameplay is a little slower than on the Amiga, but actually I think that was the case even with uh, with a physical Archimedes as well. So I'm not gonna sweat that too much. And as you'd expect from a software emulator, there is a tiny bit of lag, but not enough to cause a problem. Still perfectly playable. So we'll come out of there. Okay, and since we looked at Zool, we'll have a look at Zool as well. Okay, so this version of Zool is subtly different. You can see it's missing the backdrops, but um, but in terms of the performance, it's actually very respectable. Oops. Yeah, not not quite so pretty, but actually the uh, the sprites are, are certainly sharper than on the Amiga version. And then just because we're doing 
Battle of the Wedges, as it were, will come out of here. So it's control end to exit full screen. And we can just close the window and then we'll fire up the Atari ST. Okay, so because we haven't put a disc in the drive, uh, this is just gonna come up to the gem desktop. But um, what we'll do, we'll press F12 and go into the Atari screen options. We'll put that up to full screen and apply that. And then we'll put a floppy disk in the drive. And so we've got a, a comparison Kind of floppy disks and then Xenon 2. Okay, oh, actually, do you know what? Yeah, we will do Xenon 2. Okay, and we'll tell it to reset the machine at the same time. <laughs> So, as you can probably hear, the audio quality on the ST version leaves a lot to be desired when compared to the Amiga and the um, Arcades. So there you go. Um, hopefully that was of some interest, um, and it's worth I think if you haven't already seen the uh, the FPGA video, having a quick look at that. Although it it doesn't go into any real detail in terms of the gameplay, so I'll have to do a follow up so that um, so that you can literally do a side by side comparison. If you're thinking about building uh, a machine to do some software emulation, this is perhaps one option. And actually, to be fair. It's very respectable. You know, I'm being a bit picky here because I'm comparing it to something something else. I'm comparing it to, uh, to the FPGA, which obviously has certain fringe benefits, but then the FPGA is going to have a, you know, a considerably heftier price tag than, uh, than the software emulation, which is pretty much free. So there you go. Hopefully that was, uh, that was useful. See you on the next one. Cheers.